Hey everyone, this is Kevin from Kevin's Micro Fleet. Today I've got a Micro Galaxy Squadron review. We're going to be taking a look at the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, the arcade set. We're going to take a look at the figures, at the vehicles, at the packaging. We'll do some measurements and we'll do a comparison. Let's go ahead and dive into the review. So let's go ahead and start with the packaging. This is actually based off of the Star Wars Atari game, uh, which was a, uh, a big arcade game that had TIE fighters and X-Wings fighting in them. Um, and it looks uh, really cool. If you want any images of the actual game, you can look online for them. But this is essentially what the arcade game kind of looked like. So you have your vehicles inside, you've got the Star Wars there at the top, you've got down here, there are these little um, buttons. They don't actually function other than this on and off switch, which I'll show you how that functions here in a minute to turn on a black light to make those um, actually glow, which is a really cool feature. You've got your plastic here on the front to be able to see, and then the plastic up here for the Star Wars. The rest of this, unfortunately, is cardboard. Um, I wish that they'd used a different type of material for it because the packaging looks so cool. You can see the tape up here on the bottom where it's showing as this thing is all taped together. Um, because the graphics on this are so cool, had they done this in a different type of a material, I think it would have made this thing pop a lot more. As we turn it to the side though, we get a chance to see there is the Star Wars on the side. You can see again, here's the matte finish that it has, and then there's the tape there at the top. We turn it around to the back, the artwork on the back looks fantastic. You got Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron, Hyperdrive set maybe is what they're calling this. And then again, you've got uh, all of the vehicles that are fighting there in the background. A chance to see the other side looks the same here's what the top looks like and then if we flip this around to the bottom that is what the bottom looks like with the upc on there as well so i'm going to go ahead and turn the lights off so that we can turn on the black light feature so that way you have an opportunity to see what that looks like now this is where i would say the main draw of this item is is the ability to turn on this black light. You can see that it lights up here up on the top as well as the vehicles inside. And I will say that on the video right now, as you see it, it looks really nice and bright. In person, it is significantly darker than what you're seeing actually on the video. So I would say, gosh, that's two or three, maybe even five shades darker than what you're actually seeing on the video. But it does look really awesome on camera, getting a chance to see those light up. There are black lights on the inside. You can see there are the actual LED lights there on the sides of that. And this looks really, really nice in the packaging with the lights off like this. Um, I do wish that in person, when you have this turned on like this, that it was just a little bit brighter on the interior, although I'm not sure how bright you can make it with a uh, black light, but uh, that does look really slick um, looking at that on the video. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up so that way we get a chance to see the vehicle actually from the inside. Now I'm working to open the box here and this is one of the disadvantages of this thing being um, constructed the way that it was with the tape and the cardboard is that you really have to deconstruct the whole box in order to be able to take it apart. The other thing is as I was taking this apart, if you do, I would recommend doing it this way where you remove the side part first. So these little parts here, the tabs that are in the side actually do stick in and you can see that here with the top part that as I was trying to remove it, you can see it actually started to rip the cardboard, which again is disappointing that this thing is just a, this cardboard because when you try to go to remove this, you can literally rip the package and you can't be able to put it back together and have it look like it's in a reasonable condition. Then you can see here is the interior of it, which we'll obviously see some more here as I continue to take this apart. This piece here is uh, connected in through the back. Um, so let me go ahead and finish taking it apart and then we'll look at it completely deconstructed. Okay, so now I've got this thing apart just a little bit further and here you can see there is your plastic blister there that has the actual vehicles on it. You can see how these are attached. I have a hard time believing I'm gonna be able to get these to attach again once I actually take them out of here but I'm sure I'll figure out a way to be able to get them back onto this blister. You can see as I turn this thing around, it's got this piece taped together like that. So 
I'll have to remove all the tape to be able to, actually I probably won't have to remove any of that tape to be perfectly honest because I can keep this blister pack attached and then clip these little um, pieces here to be able to remove the actual vehicles out so we can take a look at them as well as the pilots that come in it. Here is the interior of the package. So I'm gonna to try to keep this as constructed as I can so I can just put it right back together. Here is your battery pack. So I have heard quite a bit about this battery pack that there is, um, that it's all taped together. And yes, you can see it's got this plastic cover on it, um, which it looks like you can remove that off of there. It does have some wires. I've heard of somebody that actually did remove this completely and it's got just three AA batteries in there. You can see that this whole piece is just hot glued onto the actual packaging. And then there is your lights there, the interior lights that you got. Um, and then there is some lighting as well up here inside of this. I'm not gonna take all of that stuff apart because I do wanna put this back together um, once I'm done looking at it. But there is what it looks like when you have this box all the way taken apart. So now I actually snipped those little pieces off of there to be able to remove these. They will actually sit back in here. This, uh, the TIE Fighter does sit in there pretty good and won't fall out, as well as the X-Wing right here on the engine, it actually kind of snaps right into that blister pack. So you can just pry that out of there. So if you did want to take this out to be able to look at it, you can certainly do that and then be able to reassemble this whole thing and put it back together. So now I have the vehicles completely out and let's go ahead and take a look at these um, first with the deco of the actual vehicle and then we'll take a look at the figures because the figures are incredible. So here is our TIE Fighter. So this has this glow in the dark green paint on it. Um, in the, the camera right now it looks a little more muted than the actual um, color that you see in person. I mean it is a really bright neon type of a green. Um, and it looks really, really nice. So you get a chance to see here what it, here's what it looks like from the top and then from the back, how all of the lines connect, which is essentially how this looks in the game. It's, uh, it's pretty unique in terms of how they went through and did the design here on this. And again, when you use the black light on it, it does look really, really cool. It's got the visor here on the front, or sorry, this cockpit window has got the paint on it. And then when you open this up, the um, interior here, this is the same as what we got with your Series 1 TIE Fighter, where it doesn't have the glass on it. Um, it just has this glossy black finish there on the top. It does have the little eject button inside to be able to eject the figure out. And then on the back here, if we pull this down, it still has some of that deco there on the inside, which obviously you wouldn't really see. Um, this looks very similar to the Series 1 TIE Fighter, which I do want to take just a quick look at it compared. So here is your Series 1 TIE Fighter. It feels about the same in terms of the, um, the weight of it. You can see the height of the wings there is the same. The cockpit looks, it looks slightly different, obviously, just because the difference in the color, the black versus the gray. I would say those look very, very similar in terms of the size. And then if we look at that compared to the Series 2 cockpit, you can see again, it's very similar. So it's possible that they could be using either mold for the cockpit, obviously with the battle damage wings here on the Series 2 TIE Fighter. Gosh, I mean, it's a coin flip between the two. It does look closer to the Series 1 design than it does look to the Series 2 in my personal opinion but um, it's, uh, it's very possible that once they got rid of the Series 1 TIE Fighter and they started doing the Series 2, they just completely eliminated that specific mold. Although with the Series 2, you will have the clear cockpit here, or sorry, the clear canopy on the top that's actually transparent that you'd be able to see through. On this vehicle though, obviously it doesn't really make that big of a difference because it's black anyways, but that is that. Very, very cool looking. Now let's take a look at the figure itself. The figure is by far the coolest thing I would say of this. I mean, they did a fantastic job with the deco on this. The red visor, you've got the Imperial cog there on the top of the helmet. Even the two pinstripe lines there on the top look really, really nice. 
and all of the green there on the back. The mold looks roughly the same. If you actually look at this, um, so the mold is about the same, but the size is slightly different. So you could see, I'm trying to do this the best way as I can. So you can actually see that the, the San Diego Comic-Con version is slightly taller than the Series 1. Now, one of the biggest differences is the feet, that the feet do look, and the, the boots here on this version, do look to be a little bit thicker, and the bottom of the feet are wider to make it a little bit easier for these to stand up. So, I mean, gosh, it's a very minor difference. We'll uh, take a look at that here as I measure it in just a minute. But um, let's actually do that measurement right now, actually. So here is your Series 1 version. So you can see that is, um, that is almost exactly an inch, maybe an inch and a sixteenth. And here is your Series 2, or sorry, your San Diego Comic-Con one, which is almost the exact same size. It's just ever so slightly larger. So that is that. Now... Let's go ahead and take a look at the X-Wing. So the X-Wing, again, has this really cool blue pinstriping on it. Um, I mean, gosh, this thing looks really, really nice. Even with the red on it, I will more than likely actually having these out of the box, have them displayed this way, not in the actual box, um, because they look so cool. And there is the underside. This has all the same features to your normal X-Wing with the closing wings. It will also have your landing gear here on the front. It's got the little eject button there for your droid. On the underside too, they use black screws instead of silver screws, which is really cool. And then the canopy actually looks like it's painted, but it's not. It's just this dark transparent um, glass or plastic. So great, great work on this design. Here's what the back of it looks like. And then again with the figures, an incredible job here. So here is your droid first, and you get a chance to see there is the, the detailing on the droid looks really nice, as well as the top of the head. That I can't believe they got that paneling to work. It looks so much better with that. And then here is your X-Wing pilot. It's got the blue visor. It's got the red all on him. The You've got the Republic signal or uh, sorry republic logo there on his helmet as well as this other little teeny logo i mean it is amazing that they're able to get that detail on a figure that's this small because this guy is only an inch tall now if we look at that compared to your series one luke skywalker's x-wing you can see again the mold is going to be the exact same there's no difference there between the two all of the same features to it and there's what it looks like on the bottom now, as you look at the actual figure itself, again, this is your Series 1 version, and it is, they've come such a long way with the quality of their figures. So there is what he looks like. Again, same mold. You can't see a lot of the detail on the, uh, the Luke Skywalker from Series 1, just because, again, it's that white plastic, but it has all the same exact details as the, the San Diego Comic-Con version. So very, very cool. All of the measurements of the vehicles are gonna be the exact same. So if we wanted to just run through those really quick, this is four and three quarter inches. Front to back, it is all the way to the back of the engine is five and a half inches. Your TIE Fighter here, it is just under three inches wide, three and a quarter inches deep, and four inches tall. So that is it for your San Diego Comic-Con, your Hyperdrive or Arcade uh, exclusive. If you like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe. You can check out my links in, the, in uh, the description below for some Amazon items where you can get other Micro Galaxy Squadron stuff. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll catch everybody on the next review.